Okay, we should be live. If you haven't checked bindingchaos.com yet, please go do so. This uh, session is all about uh, developing the website. So if you have any questions about it, or we tried it, tried it out and you have any complaints about what doesn't work, this is a good time to raise them because we are live developing this site. Just quickly touch on, uh, so if you have a Garmin watch or something, apparently, I don't have one, but apparently they uh, using this uh, feed a file format and ChatGPT seemed to know a lot about it. So we were so it was able to generate a file that uh, uh, loads a feed file from a Garmin watch. So it's just an old uh, example from GitHub from about seven years ago, so it must be a very old watch but it's able to it's using this uh, it's actually two major libraries for passing those fit files there's a fit file parser and uh, now one that's called something else so it's able to extract uh, what's in the header but the header looks a bit weird so we have a header length of 12, however we're only showing 4 records, I don't know why. So we have to fix that and uh, I don't know if there is any interest in doing this, but we will uh, uh, try and display the data. The interesting thing, I don't think all the watches have uh, PPG data in them. So that's uh, the main one I'm after. I want to see if it's a, a textbook uh, PPG like. Yes, yeah, so we'll have the heart rate, temperature, it should have uh, accelerometer data. Apparently, the sampling rate is not. Uh, uh, determine like in a standalone uh, number it's actually but uh, each uh, supposedly each data point has its own uh, time, st time stamp so we'll see how uh, that works so it suggested some more functions but they have uh, placeholders in them Getting a bit uh, confused with something. Anyway, the header is there. I don't know, should we spend more time on this? Considering it's a very old file from about uh, seven years ago or so. So if you have any newer data files, if you know that your device has a uh, recording uh, PPG, it's the blood oxygenation level oximetry. Then, uh, yeah, either ideally just pop your data onto GitHub. So anyone, including myself, can have a quick look. Let's move on to other things that we're doing. So the last uh, published tools is the EG2 Music Converter. If you tried it out, if you haven't tried it yet, please do so. Let me know what you think. There is also the music from uh, hand gestures that, yes, might, well, will definitely not work on a mobile device. So I'm not sure 
and I haven't tried it on a laptop. It does work with a GPU on uh, my machine pretty well. I do have issues with my web cameras. I have two of them connected. Yeah, currently I just gave up on uh, troubleshooting them. We always looking for public biomedical data set. So we have quite a few that we might be looking at. There is um, the TUH EEG data set is quite uh, interesting from uh, Temple University Hospital. And it's quite an old one. All of them will be quite old. If you have any access to newer one, ones in the, you know where to find them in the public domain, please do let me know as well. And we had another one that we were looking at more recently. And I've lost its uh, name. Maybe someone can remind me. One sec. Check my. I was downloading some of its uh, data. It has MRI as well. So you could to try doing that as well. Yeah, we have a raw EG in a CSV file format. Should be pretty straight forward to load I don't remember if we started on it already or not yeah I was always trying to do a cochlear model as well but yes uh, currently it's really bad Ideal, it would just model uh, how a cochlear implant work uh, with, uh, by using your device's uh, microphone. We'll show you which electrodes on a virtual uh, cochlear implant electrode array are being stimulated when you talk into your own microphone. So that could be a fun project. Let me know what you think. If there's no specific suggestions, we might dive in into need some sort of project random number generator. Let's do another. Yes, we're doing the eye tracking work. It's got the uh, stuck on it as well. Yeah, the most uh, successful one. Well, we actually spend so much time on it. So we must uh, publish it considering how much time we spend. Uh, I have to double check with this would be about like 20 live streams or so. So we have this uh, Flask application. The app by the actual Flask application. We have two JavaStream JavaScript codes. One that actually generating the waveforms, the simple math functions, nothing fancy, have the game logic, and start 
swapping it into GPT-4 because what's up if it's there? It's weird. Just make it smaller. Yeah, start popping it into GPT-4 because we can code GPT-4 again uh, better than um, GitHub Copilot. So we have the HTML code, so the waveforms, a JS, and generating the actual uh, ECG normal, abnormal waveforms. This window became really bad. I don't remember having issues like that where it would not uh, scroll to the bottom. It's a bit weird. And we have the Python script. So now the context there, it's not the context length, but the window size for GPT-4 on the OpenAI website is uh, very long now. So we can try a single shot prompt. Let's run the application as well. Uh, so this is what it looks like. You can still play it yourself. Hopefully you already know how or tried it out already. Right, currently we're getting this error as well, so hopefully should be pretty straightforward for GitHub or well you'll think GitHub Copilot will solve this pretty quickly. But last time I tried it didn't do a good job. And it's prompted some more. So hopefully this prompt is not too long. Uh, we are sharing all the code for this Flask application. By the way, we developing it uh, while live streaming. So if you like being a co-host, uh, please let me know. If you have any funny jokes, go for it. But keep them relevant to the topic. The Flask application has these four different files. Um, the HTML to JavaScript files and a Python backend Flask application that does all the fuzzy logic analysis. And essentially a robot that is playing the ECG scoring game. Currently we're getting the error that I also shared. If you could sort that one, we can be on our way uh, developing the tool further and eventually publishing it on our website. So our valuable viewers can uh, access the application, play with it and provide feedback. All right, diving straight into the issue with your Flask app. The error you're encountering, less than, not supported between instances of float and dict, suggests a type mismatch in a comparison operation in your analyze underscore waveform function. This usually happens when you're trying to compare a number, float, with a dictionary, which Python doesn't allow. Looking at your code, I see the problem likely originates from your calculate underscore intervals function. You're returning a dictionary from this function, but in analyze underscore waveform, you're treating the outputs, pr underscore interval and rt underscore interval, as if they were numeric values. In the line. 
you're assigning dictionaries to PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval, which are expected to be numerical values for the fuzzy logic system. To resolve this, you need to ensure that PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are numeric. If these intervals are supposed to be single values, you need to modify calculate underscore intervals to return a single numeric value, like an average or median of intervals, instead of a dictionary. Alternatively, if PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are intended to be collections of values, you need to rethink how they're incorporated into your fuzzy logic system, as the system expects numerical input for its calculations. As for a relevant joke, how about this, why do programmers prefer dark mode? Because light attracts bugs. I hope this helps you sort out the error. If you need more detailed assistance or have other questions, feel free to ask. Okay, with the jokes you have to be careful. I heard this one like thousand times already. So if you're going for a joke, maybe make sure it's uh, not in your training data set already. Now regards the code are you gonna actually generate the code yourself or are those prompts for github copilot to use i don't mind one way or the other hey can you also look at the, can you also confirm reading the entire code uh, give it a quick uh, summary and some uh, general perspective of what it can be useful for uh, keep in mind that we already have a flask web application on the website which allows a human user to play the ecg scoring game Okay, we might try those as um, GitHub Copilot prompts. Let's select the whole app by because we don't know um, where we need to make the change. Well, we do know because it's telling us. Uh, so let's actually go there. Yeah, we're doing it in the same way as for the other variables. Uh, can you also look at uh, what the parameters, uh, what features of the ECG waveforms the fuzzy logic algorithm is currently looking at? Explain some uh, trade-offs between the different features selection. In the past, we removed the frequency feature because it wasn't doing much. Uh, keep in mind that we are not looking at a continuous ECG. We are looking at individual P, Q, R, S, T waveforms at a time.
uh, can you also for reference look at the images provided this is what the front page of the web application looks like and it's uh, scrolling the ECG waveforms from uh, right to left should not matter yep I've taken a look at your code and the images you provided. Let's break it down. Your Flask web application is essentially an interactive ECG waveform game that challenges users to identify abnormal ECG patterns. The game displays scrolling ECG waveforms, and the user must click on sections they identify as abnormal. The game provides real-time scoring based on hits, false alarms, correct rejections, and misses. Moreover, it features a parallel scoring system that uses fuzzy logic for waveform analysis, serving as a benchmark or an eye opponent. The fuzzy logic algorithm analyzes the waveforms using several features to decide whether a segment is abnormal. These features include positive peaks, the number of peaks above a certain threshold, negative peaks, the number of dips below a certain threshold, amplitude, the difference between the maximum and minimum values in a waveform, R peak sharpness, a measure of how peaked or sharp the R wave is within the QRS complex. Regarding feature selection, you mentioned removing the frequency feature due to its limited utility. In the context of ECG analysis, especially when not considering continuous streams but individual complexes, the frequency might not be as informative as the morphology, shape and characteristics, but the waveforms. For instance, the sharpness of the R peak or the presence of P or T waves can be more indicative of certain conditions like arrhythmias or ischemic events. Trade-offs in feature selection often involve balancing specificity and sensitivity. For example, focusing on amplitude might help you detect large abnormalities but could miss subtle yet clinically significant changes. Conversely, too much emphasis on R-peak sharpness might lead to false positives in cases of benign variations. Looking at the images, they seem to display the game interface, where the waveforms scroll from right to left, and the users and AI's scores are updated in real time. This setup provides a dynamic and engaging way for users to learn about ECG interpretation, possibly even serving as an educational tool for students or healthcare professionals. In terms of the utility of your application, it sits at the intersection of education, gamification, and clinical skill development. It can be particularly useful for medical students to practice ECG interpretation in a risk-free, gamified environment. Healthcare professionals as a refresher tool to maintain their ECG interpretation skills. Cardiac patients to understand their own ECG readings and become more engaged in their healthcare. Lastly, the scrolling nature of the waveforms adds a layer of difficulty by mimicking the continuous feed of an ECG machine, which can enhance the user's ability to identify abnormalities under pressure, akin to real-life clinical situations. I hope this summary gives you the broader perspective you were looking for. If you need more detailed feedback, specific feature analysis, or further development advice, feel free to ask. Okay, so it's working okay now it's actually producing the results so this is the analysis of the fuzzy logic uh, and says this signal is abnormal which is wrong and it also gives a number of peaks of 29 which is no good if you reduce the noise all the way down to zero it produces the correct number of positive and negative peaks Make the screen a bit bigger. So the bot is essentially clicking on everything, uh, making a decision that everything is abnormal, including normal waveforms like this one. This is no good. We'll have to fix that. Okay, we need to show the 
API uh, intervals on the front page as well. In Copilot, let's try workspace. Can we show the PR and RD intervals on the front panel? So it should direct us to the JavaScript, the game logic JavaScript all and the index HTML. Those meant to be clickable links, yes. So we're still in the Python code. We are returning this to Yes, we're looking at the amplitude, the, the number of positive peaks, number of negative peaks, the R peak sharpness, we should also have these two. We update so yes, and we're using a uh, JSON responses to communicate. Now those are not links anymore. That's a bit odd. Right, this is better. Okay, so in JavaScript. It's making up code. It's not actually looking at the file. Just because it's only looked at the Python code. Yeah, we don't have PR and RT mentioned in the JavaScript. I don't know, can we just do this? 
So I have 200 lines in the game logic. Yes, we already did this. Analyze result function. Yes, those two look legit. want to display them on the front panel oops HTML Yes, we'll look at the analysis result, a number of positive and negative peaks, raw amplitude, R peak sharpness, abnormality score. So that's the output. So here somewhere. Can we use this instead? That's a comment. Right, this is better. Okay, so we have those two undefined, even though we actually have zero values in the back end. That's interesting. Any major errors in JavaScript? No. Uh, let's do this quickly. Sounds looks like we're gonna go back to GPT four in a second. Log, yeah, we're definitely not looking at the frequency anymore or at not normalizing the amplitude. Do want to console the data mainly. that we can see the PR interval. No, it's actually zero. So why it says undefined there. It should give zero. Well, even if it is zero, it's not uh, calculated correctly. 
that should not be there. Let's try to reduce noise. That always helps to test. This interval should uh, not be zero. No, we don't want to check if it's zero or not. Calculate the intervals. We have a function for it. taking the data and then the input of what type of interval we are looking for. We want to make sure that function is working correctly. Can we get GPT to something useful? A copilot doesn't not manage the code. Can you regenerate the following function with the necessary changes? Yep. Yeah, GPT-4 by default is not uh, designed, doesn't want to generate code. But once it starts generating code, then you can't stop it, kind of thing. Certainly. The calculate underscore intervals function is intended to calculate specific intervals within the ECEG waveform, such as the PR and RT intervals. To fix the issues and make the function work as intended, I'll rewrite it. Firstly, I'm assuming you have a way to identify the indices for P, QRS, RP, and T waves. If not, that's a prerequisite step that needs to be added to your processing pipeline. The intervals are typically calculated between the start of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex, PR interval, and from the end of the QRS complex to the start of the T wave, RT interval. Here's a revised version of the calculate underscore intervals function that will return numerical values for PR and RT intervals.
This function now returns the mean PR and RT intervals if there are multiple intervals calculated within the waveform. If there are no intervals found, it returns zero. You might need to adjust this logic based on how you want to handle cases where no intervals are detected. Before using this function, ensure that you have a reliable way to detect the P, R, and T waves within the waveform. The calculation of intervals is contingent on the accurate detection of these points. Uh, this piece of code meant to be using the detect peak function. This uh, function, a uh, calculate intervals function, meant to be using detect peak function. I provided the whole code that we have so far. Can you fix it with the current code? 
I get the following error. From the error message you provided, it seems the problem lies in the use of a NumPy array in a Boolean context, which NumPy does not allow due to ambiguity. This typically happens when NumPy arrays are involved in conditions that require a single Boolean value, like if statements, but the operation used results in an array of Boolean values. Looking at your calculate underscore intervals function, you seem to be attempting to calculate the PR and RT intervals but not using the detect underscore peaks function to find the peaks first. Let's rewrite the calculate underscore intervals function properly. This function should detect the peaks within the waveform, then calculate the PR and RT intervals based on those peaks. In your process underscore data function, you need to adjust the following. And then, since you are returning a tuple, you need to ensure that the JSON response can serialize these values. If you're expecting just one PR interval and one RT interval, this should work fine. However, if you're expecting multiple intervals and you want to return an average or list, you need to adjust the logic accordingly. Lastly, when you use these interval values in your fuzzy logic analysis, you need to ensure that you're passing a single value, not a tuple. Please, make sure to test these changes thoroughly as the assumptions used for peak detection and interval calculations are quite simplified and may not hold in all cases. You will likely need a more sophisticated algorithm for reliable ECG peak detection and interval calculation, especially if you're working with real-world ECG data.
Okay, we need to rewrite this uh, peak detector. It's important, so we'll ask uh, GPT-4 to do it as well. It's identifying peaks in a given waveform. A peak in this case is this is um, defined as a point that is higher than its immediate neighbors. In this configuration, looking at the image provider provided, we're only getting one peak, which is not right. So we have to adjust the, the height and distance parameters. Ideally, we would not have those uh, magic numbers in the code at all. Well, threshold could be anything above the noise or above the baseline level. Uh, maybe distance between successive uh, peaks can be automatically determined as well. Any suggestions? Can you rewrite this uh, function? Yep. So we provided both this uh, image. It's only found the uh, one peak with the current configuration. Hopefully it can rewrite uh, the whole uh, function. The detect underscore peaks function is crucial for identifying the P, Q, R, S, and T components of the ECEG waveform. The parameters for height and distance you've used are fixed, which may not be suitable for all waveforms, as ECGs can vary greatly from one individual to another and even within the same individual over time. We need a more dynamic approach to adapt to different waveforms. One method is to use a percentage of the maximum height to set the threshold and to analyze the typical width of the QRS complex to estimate an appropriate minimum distance between peaks. Here's how you could adjust the function.
This function first detects all peaks above a dynamic threshold based on the relative height to the maximum peak. It then calculates the median distance between these initial peaks and uses this information to rerun the peak detection with a minimum distance set to half of the median peak distance. By using the relative height and dynamically determined distance, this approach should adapt better to different ECG waveforms and noise levels. Note, this function assumes that your ECG waveform is relatively clean and that P, QRS, and T waves are the most prominent features. If this is not the case, additional pre-processing steps might be necessary to filter out noise or artifacts before peak detection. Now it's finding more peaks. It will reduce the noise level to zero just for testing it's finding two peaks even though they're meant to be three just test that it's uh, working at all in theory make it point one Reduce the noise to zero. Yeah, we get uh, three of them, which is correct. There's still three. This one should have only two. Yeah, that's correct. And we also have another waveform uh, that has the second and third, whatever they call P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T is the last one. So now we should be able to calculate the distance between them, but for some reason, P, R, R. T intervals um, are calculated to be zero. That's not right. Yeah, so this one is the R and T. So we get 320 and 560, which is about right. Yeah, this calcul uh, calculating intervals between peaks is not working correctly. So the good 
being with uh, GPT-4 as opposed to Copilot is that we can do this. We can load images into it. Let's do, let's use it. Copy in the whole code just because we can. We, oops, because the this message uh, text box now can take uh, very long uh, messages. So we had the image, we had the text, and we need this output. So I uploaded the front panel, uh, what the waveform looks like, the whole code, uh, the Flask application uh, backend that we currently have. And and the output. So we have three peaks. We have the uh, indices for for them. They seem to be correct. However, the P R and R T intervals are still calculated to be zero. Can you check the code and uh, make specific uh, uh, changes to just make it work? Yep. Certainly. Let's revise the calculate underscore intervals function to correctly calculate the PR and RT intervals based on the detected peaks. We'll also need to ensure that the detect underscore peaks function is correctly identifying the P, QRS, R peak, and T waves, which are the key components for calculating these intervals. Given the indices of the peaks, we should be able to determine the intervals. Assuming the first peak is P, the second is R, and the third is T, which might not always be the case and a more sophisticated peak labeling mechanism might be necessary. Let's fix the calculate underscore intervals function. Now, we'll modify the process underscore data function to use the new calculate underscore intervals function. Finally, make sure the analyze underscore waveform route is correctly handling the cases when PR underscore interval or RT underscore interval is none, as JSON serialization will fail for none values. You might want to convert them to a serializable format like a string.
Make these changes, test the application thoroughly, and ensure that the assumptions made about the order of the peaks are correct for your specific application. If the peaks do not consistently correspond to P, R, and T in that order, you'll need a more complex peak classification mechanism. Certainly, let's revise the calculate underscore intervals function to correctly calculate the PR and RT intervals based on the detected peaks. We also need to ensure that the detect underscore peaks function is correctly identifying the P, QRS, R peak, and T waves, which are the key components for calculating these intervals. Given the indices of the peaks, we should be able to determine the intervals. Assuming the first peak is P, the second is R, and the third is T, which might not always be the case and a more sophisticated peak labeling mechanism might be necessary, let's fix the calculate underscore intervals function. Finally, make sure the analyze underscore waveform route is correctly handling the cases when PR underscore interval or RT underscore interval is none, as JSON serialization will fail for none values. You might want to convert them to a serializable format like a string. Make these changes, test the application thoroughly, and ensure that the assumptions made about the order of the peaks are correct for your specific application. If the peaks do not consistently correspond to P, R, and T in that order, you need a more complex peak classification mechanism.
Okay, it's actually seemed to work quite well. The PR intervals now seem legit. However, there's something else that's broken. Yeah, I kind of don't trust the copilot so much. Can pop the different examples into GPT again. I think we have enough of them. try not prompting at all but just do the output the errors and the code as a prompt let's see what it says the error message you're encountering object of type in 64 is not json serializable typically occurs when you attempt to directly serialize NumPy data types into JSON format using JS Onify. To resolve this, you need to convert the NumPy types to native Python data types before serializing them. In the process underscore data function, when the PR and RT intervals are calculated, they're returned as NumPy in 64 types if they're not none. To fix the serialization issue, you should explicitly convert these to Python integers or floats, as intervals can be fractions. If they're none, you should handle them appropriately to ensure that they're in a format that can be serialized to JSON. Here's how you can adjust the process underscore data function to do that. Note that I've used float to convert the intervals since intervals can be fractional in some cases, but if there are always whole numbers in your application, you could use int instead. Make sure to update this conversion in any other place where you might be returning NumPy data types that need to be serialized into JSON. For the calculate underscore intervals function, you have a new implementation, so just ensure it's called correctly in process underscore data and that it is returning the intervals in the format you need. Also, it seems you have a potential issue with the peak detection logic. If you have only two peaks detected, like in the last error message, then you're expecting P, R, and T waves, then you need to revise your peak detection or handle cases where you don't have all the expected peaks. Finally, after you've made these changes, make sure to thoroughly test your application with various ECG data inputs to ensure it's working as expected and handling edge cases properly.
Also, it seems you have a potential issue with the peak detection logic. If you have only two peaks detected, like in the last error message, and you're expecting P, R, and T waves, then you need to revise your peak detection or handle cases where you don't have all the expected peaks. If the peak detection logic is not consistently finding the P, R, and T waves in the ECG data, you will need to address this issue to ensure accurate interval calculation. Here are some steps you can take to refine the peak detection. Dynamic thresholding. Instead of using a fixed proportion of the maximum value of the waveform, like 0.5, you can implement a more dynamic approach that considers the variability in the waveform. For instance, you could set the threshold to a value based on the noise level or the baseline wonder of the ECG. Adaptive distance, the distance parameter in Skippy. Signal, find underscore peaks can be dynamically adjusted based on the expected heart rate or the sampling rate of the ECG. This can help in distinguishing between consecutive R peaks and avoiding the detection of T or P waves as R peaks. Waveform segmentation. If the waveform contains multiple heartbeats, segment the waveform into individual beats before peak detection. This can help isolate the P, QRS complex, and T wave of each beat. Post-processing of detected peaks, after initial peak detection, apply additional criteria to classify the peaks into P, R, and T waves. For example, you could use the knowledge of typical ECG morphology to identify which peak is likely to be the R wave based on its amplitude and then look for P and T waves relative to the R wave's position. Error handling, implement logic to handle cases where not all waves are detected. This could include returning a flag or a special value indicating that the interval can be calculated, which your application logic can then handle appropriately. Machine learning approaches, consider using machine learning algorithms that can learn to identify P, R, and T waves from labeled ECG data. This can be more robust than threshold-based detection, especially if you have a diverse dataset for training. Here is an example of a revised detect underscore peaks function with dynamic thresholding and adaptive distance. It keeps reverting to a R R a interval, even though I'm pretty sure I said that we should not be looking at it because we have the R peaks coming individually, uh, one uh, waveform at a time. I mean, we can just connect them together. And we could look at the RR as well.
Okay, the bot is not doing very well at the moment, is it? A couple, couple of issues. Yeah, brain processing ECG looks tempting. Uh, sampling rate is defined by the number of data points. What on earth? <laughs> GPT is really playing <laughs> up. Don't like this uh, magic numbers. Some uh, basic uh, suggesting um, a GitHub Copilot suggesting some basic uh, Butterworth uh, filter. We are not currently doing any filtering. Yeah, filtering. Actually, yeah, probably don't really need it. Well, not at least not for this uh, application. We're adding synthetic uh, noise. And we actually want to show how the algorithm is uh, um, performing poorly when the noise is increased so we don't want to filter yeah this one might need another couple of uh, sessions. some simple thing that we could fix uh, right now this display is not working correctly Okay, cool. 
quickly do another session. Just continue with this one. The front panel, the HTML, is uh, always showing the same thing. The back end seem to work correctly. Can you suggest a fix a looking specifically at the code we have? You should have all the code C above. I'll just finish up soon. If you can summarize the whole code, that will be great. Certainly. The backend logic seems to be working correctly and calculating the intervals as expected. The problem appears to be related to the communication between the backend and the front end. From your provided code, the back end is sending the calculated PR and RT intervals correctly. However, the front end seems to be expecting string values, undefined, for cases where intervals are not calculated, which is evident in this snippet from your Flask root. If the intervals are calculated as 240.0, this is a floating point number, and the check for none will not trigger the undefined string to be returned. Instead, it should directly send the calculated values to the front end. The front end, HTML, JavaScript, should handle the display logic. If the back end sends none or a non numeric value, then the front end should display undefined or any other placeholder text. This way, you maintain the separation of concerns, where the back end is responsible for data processing and the front end for display. Here's how you can modify the back end to send none if intervals are not calculated. and in your calculate underscore intervals function, ensure that it returns none if intervals cannot be calculated. I don't know what's happening to open the AI website. It's like weird stuff.
experience. Okay, we are having the same problem. Okay, I might finish up, say bye bye. Just, uh, yeah, especially when uh, the GPT. It's not working. Might try Copilot. I'll see you next time. Bye. The issue seems to be with how the PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are being handled when they're none. The Flask application is trying to convert none to a float, which is not possible and should be avoided. In the process underscore data function, you're correctly checking if PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are none and setting them to undefined, if they are. However, in the analyze underscore waveform route, you're trying to convert them to floats without checking if they're none. Here's the fix. Remove the float conversion in the analyze underscore waveform function for PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval. Directly assign the values from processed underscore data to processed underscore data underscore converted as you already handled the none case in process underscore data. Here's the corrected code snippet. Ensure that the front end JavaScript code that reads these values can handle both numeric and string undefined values appropriately. Also, make sure that the calculate underscore intervals function returns none when the intervals cannot be calculated. This logic is already in place in your provided code. Finally, make sure that your front-end template that displays the PR and RT intervals can handle these undefined values correctly. If it is expecting a string undefined and you are passing none, you might need to update the front-end code to check for none and display undefined accordingly.
the JavaScript code handling the PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval should be adjusted to correctly display the values when they're not undefined. Here's how you can update the display analysis result function to handle this. In the above code, I am using the fixed to method to format the interval values to two decimal places. This method is only called if the PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are not undefined. If they are undefined, it will simply display PR interval undefined and RT interval undefined, respectively. Make sure that the IDs used in get element by id match the actual IDs of the elements in your HTML. If they do not match, the correct values will not be displayed. After you update your JavaScript file, ensure you clear your browser cache or do a hard refresh, Ctrl plus F5 on most browsers, to load the updated script.
Normalizing the PR and RT intervals relative to the entire length of the waveform is a sound approach. It will give you a ratio of the interval length to the waveform length, resulting in a value between 0 and 1. Here's how you can implement this normalization in your process underscore data function in Python. Now, the PR and RT interval values will be between 0 and 1. However, please note that this normalization assumes that the interval of interest, PR or RT, is relevant over the entire length of the waveform, which might not be the case in actual ECG analysis. To reflect these changes in your JavaScript code, you will need to update the display analysis result function to handle the normalized values. This modification assumes that the PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are already normalized when sent from the back end. If they are sent as none from the back end, they will be represented as undefined in the front end and handled accordingly. Normalizing the PR and RT intervals relative to the entire length of the waveform is a sound approach. It will give you a ratio of the interval length to the waveform length, resulting in a value between 0 and 1. Here's how you can implement this normalization in your process underscore data function in Python. Now, the PR and RT interval values will be between 0 and 1. However, please note that this normalization assumes that the interval of interest, PR or RT, is relevant over the entire length of the waveform, which might not be the case in actual ECG analysis. To reflect these changes in your JavaScript code, you would need to update the display analysis result function to handle the normalized values.
This modification assumes that the PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval are already normalized when sent from the back end. If their sent is none from the back end, they will be represented as undefined in the front end and handled accordingly. Alright, let's break it down. Your app is essentially an ECG waveform game backed by a Flask server with a side of fuzzy logic for analysis, a biomedical engineer's equivalent of Guitar Hero, but instead of strumming to, through the fire and flames, you're identifying aberrant PQRST sequences. It's pretty niche, but hey, everyone's got their jam. The Flask app does the heavy lifting. It processes the waveform data from the post requests and calculates key metrics, such as the amplitude, peak sharpness, and those elusive PR and RT intervals. The fuzzy logic part is like the quirky judge of the game, assessing the normality of the waveform data using rules defined in the back end. It's the Simon Cowell of waveforms, if you will. We had a hiccup with the PR and RT intervals initially showing up as the infamous, undefined, duo, like a disappointing plot twist in a medical drama. But with a bit of Python surgery and JavaScript physiotherapy, we got those intervals normalized and displaying properly. Now they're more informative, providing a relative sense of duration against the full waveform. The changes we made today are like giving glasses to someone who's been squinting at a blurry ECG. We brought clarity and precision. We normalized the intervals, so now they make sense in the context of the waveform's full length, making the game's feedback more insightful for players or budding cardiologists. In terms of utility, this app sits at the crossroads of education and gamification. It's a tool that could help medical students, professionals, or even enthusiasts to hone their skills in ECG interpretation. The fuzzy logic adds an IS critique, providing a score and feedback. So, while it's not saving lives directly, it's training the people who will. Plus, it's probably more fun than reading a textbook or attending a four-hour lecture on arrhythmias. And if we're being funny, think of it as Dance Dance Revolution for the cardiology nerds. Instead of dancing mats, you've got waveforms. Instead of beats, you've got beats for the heart. Get it? It's all about staying in rhythm and making the right move, or click, in this case. Overall, this app is one of those ideas that's are out there, it just might work. It's like if your ECG machine in your gaming console had a baby, and now you're teaching their baby how to read heartbeats. Welcome to the future of medical training, where learning feels less like a palpitation-inducing exam and more like a network error.
Your app is a unique blend of gaming and medical training, using Flask for back-end operations. It analyzes ECG waveforms submitted via a web interface, applying fuzzy logic to determine abnormalities. Players interact with the game, aiming to correctly identify abnormal ECG patterns, which is scored by both human input and an automated fuzzy logic system. The app's educational value lies in its potential as a training tool for recognizing ECG anomalies. Fuzzy logic tuning. Rule refinement. The fuzzy logic rules may need more precision. They should be based on clinically relevant criteria for ECG interpretation. If the current rules are too broad or not clinically accurate, they won't provide valuable feedback. Variable adjustments. Fine-tune the membership functions for your fuzzy variables. You might need more granular categories or different shapes for the membership functions. Expert input. Consult with cardiology experts to adjust the rules and membership functions to better reflect the nuances of ECG readings. Data enrichment. Real ECG data. Train your fuzzy logic system with a data set of real ECG readings that have been annotated by experts. Feature expansion. You may want to consider additional ECG features that can be incorporated into the fuzzy logic analysis, such as QIS duration, T-wave morphology, and SANE segment changes. Algorithm complexity. Machine learning. Depending on the scope, integrating machine learning could provide a more robust analysis by learning from a large data set of ECGs. This could complement or even replace the fuzzy logic component if it proves more effective. Hybrid systems. Use a combination of fuzzy logic and machine learning where fuzzy logic handles clear-cut cases and machine learning deals with more complex, ambiguous patterns. Use a feedback loop. Learning from mistakes. Implement a feedback loop where the system learns from the hits and misses of human pairs, refining the fuzzy logic rules over time. Difficulty levels. Introduce different difficulty settings, which can help in training users progressively and also aid in fine-tuning the fuzzy logic system's performance. Performance metrics. Detailed scoring. Provide more detailed feedback on why a certain waveform was marked as normal or abnormal. This would be educational and could help in debugging the fuzzy logic system. Benchmarking. Regularly benchmark the fuzzy logic system against a set of known ECGs to monitor and improve its performance. Interface enhancements. Visual feedback. Offer real-time visual cues highlighting the segments of the ECG that triggered a hit or miss in the fuzzy logic system. Interactive tutorials. Create tutorials within the game where users can learn about ECG features and see how the fuzzy logic system analyzes them. By iterating on the fuzzy logic rules, incorporating expert knowledge, and possibly integrating more advanced AI techniques, the app could become a powerful tool for both education and preliminary diagnostic support.